you know. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to know it too well, though. So, let's see what we do here. Well, we're having everybody tell us why they want to be a circuit judge. So we'll do the same with you. Welcome back. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see all of you again. Hope you're all in great spirits today. Um, you know, I believe that there are a lot of different characteristics that make a good judge. I believe that you have to have someone who is patient. You have to have someone that wants to listen. You have to have someone that's humble. And you have to have someone that understands the law. I believe that I embody all of those characteristics. I believe that I have exhibited that in both my personal and my professional life. I believe that I will continue to hone those traits. And I believe that what this judiciary needs is a judge that's ready to come in and work. This is not a retirement position. There's a lot of work to be done. They need team players that can get in there and go wherever they're needed and just simply get the job done. No pomp or circumstance about it. Uh, and that's me. That's my personality. That's who I am. So I believe that I'm the right person for this position. Tell us uh, about your uh, trip to Tallahassee. How did that go? And most importantly, what, uh, what did you learn from it? I have to be honest. You guys have to put me on this short list because getting away from the kids and the husband for just <laughs> one night, <laughs> oh my God, it was wonderful. You know, you, you check into the hotel and you're, you're not having to chase people around the lobby and you know, you, you check in and the room's all quiet and, and you know, normally I lice all the whole room down and everyone's gagging and complaining, but it was silence and I just sprayed away and, <laughs> and I went down and, and, and it, it was, I ordered dinner, I took my time, normally I'm rushing because you don't want the kids to disturb other people and it, that was a mini vacation for me and I really need that again, so <laughs> I mean, it was wonderful. Don't, well, no, you're recording, that's right, I'm supposed to admit some things online about some purchases that I made while I'm telling but we'll just, it's pretty right over there. Okay. No, no, it was, you know, and, you know, as all of you know, I'm from a small town. I'm from Opelousas, Louisiana. I swear to God, I will never forget that walk down that street to that capital because I just felt like, like, oh my God, I can't believe, you know, that I'm here. And it was just, I got there almost two hours early just because I, my, my friend said, what are you going so early for? And I said, well, I just want to get at one with the building. And it was because it was, it was, it was huge for me um, for a lot of different reasons. So I'll never forget it. Never why, why do you think the governor didn't pick you? Oh, I just couldn't get to him, you know. I tried and I tried. You know, he has a hard job. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm a multitasker. He has to be a super multitasker. Um, I couldn't even, I was disappointed when I wasn't selected, uh, but I've known uh, Judge Nichols for a very long time. I couldn't be disappointed in the selection. Um, and so I, I understood, you know, I understood that, hey, you know, maybe this is just what it was supposed to be. She was the right person this time. Um, and I just have to believe that uh, I'm going to be the right person at some time, too. Yeah, so. What did you learn from the interview itself that you might I don't think I'm going to change anything. You know, my my goal is always to just be who I am. That's all I can be. It doesn't take a lot of work to do it. And that way I can't be tripped up. I can't be said, you know, to have said something or express an opinion that I don't truly have. And, um, and that's what I did. I mean, I, I honestly, it, they were so pleasant. Now, that was surprising to me because I think I expected something real prim and proper and, you know, but they, it, it was real relaxed uh, and we just, we conversed. You know, they asked me my thoughts on things, I gave them my opinions and, you know, I don't know if I got the answers right or wrong. When I left there, I did go back to the uh, hotel and wrote down everything, <laughs> everything that they asked me, everything that I said because I just wanted to, to process it and, and, you know, I, you know, should I have said this, should I have said that and at the end of the day, um, I was pleased with what I did. I found it was true to who I am, and you know, I don't think I would change anything. You know, I don't think it was me. I don't think of it as me not getting the position. I think of it as just I wasn't the one for that position at that time. So, 
Alicia, would you prepare different this time around? You know, what, it, what this whole process has forced me to do is be more aware of things that are happening around me. And, and I, I'll, I'll admit that was not a good suit of mine. I mean, you know, for any of you that have small children, you know, you just get caught up in day-to-day -day life. And pretty soon you know when all the new episodes of a certain show is coming on, but you don't really know or, or perceive what's going on around you. Uh, so it, it caused me to realize that I have to be more aware of what's going on in the political world, what's going on in the business world, because these are the things that, that Tallahassee wants to know what my opinions are. And I have to know about them to be able to form an opinion. So it forced me to um, grow up a little bit, you know, and then realize that, hey, you know, if you want to do this, you have to show them that you have the aptitude to absorb it. Elise, can you elaborate on, you, you filed bankruptcy in the past? Yes, sir, I did. Can you elaborate on that, please? Yes, sir. Uh, we, uh, you know, we built a house before we sold the house that we were living in, in Port Orange. And um, that was just a bad decision. That's not the way I was raised, and, and that's really not the way Alfred was raised, but I thought I understood it. I thought I understood the housing boom, and I was seeing my neighbors selling their houses for three times, you know, what they bought for them, and I just thought, oh, finally, we're, we're in with it. And then the market just completely crashed. So now we're, you know, we're in a house that we're paying more than we thought we would because we were counting on the proceeds from the first house. And for three years, we tried very hard to keep both of those mortgages afloat, and it just did not work out. Um, ultimately, we had some decisions to make in terms of what was best for our family. Do I think that it was the right moral decision or ethical decision to file bankruptcy? No. But we sat down. We didn't try to be our own doctors or our own lawyers. We met with very competent bankruptcy attorneys. We talked about the impact if, because uh, the foreclosure had already commenced. We talked about what the impact of a judgment would be and credit implications and how it would affect us. And we just decided that for our family, uh, we had to take this remedy that was afforded to us by law. Um, so we took it. And it's, you know, I tell anybody, it's never something that I pound my chest about. I'm not proud of it. I learned a lot from it. I learned to keep my expectations <laughs> within reality. Uh, I learned not to try to follow the trends and to go back to those values that, that I was raised on, not to have caviar taste with beer money, and, uh, and I learned from it. Um, we're still recovering, but our family is intact, and I think we're stronger for it, and quite frankly, I take the blame for all of it, and I told my husband afterward, I said, you're just going to have to learn how to tell me no. Even when you think, you're, I'm going to be very upset with you, you're going to have to be the head of the house and just tell me no. And I think he enjoys that a little bit more than <laughs> I intended him to, um, but, you know, that that's what happened. I appreciate your candor. No problem. Alicia, you do a lot of family law. Um, and I think you probably heard me sigh quite a bit in docket soundings and case management conference just because the time, the sheer time that you put into it. Um, have you thought about, if you were um, to, to be placed on the bench, how you would make adjustments to make that run a lot more efficiently, whether it's the case management conferences or the docket soundings in family cases? You know, I, I think that what happens is you, as a judge, you have to take control of your court. And you have to be stern about the fact that if we're there for case management conference, all I need to know is where we are and where we're going next. I don't need to hear motions. I don't need to hear unnecessary argument. That's what hearing time is for. And I think a lot of times that's what slows down the dockets when the litigants get off course on other issues. And it's not right. You know, it's not right because, like you said, as a private practitioner, I know oftentimes you have to be in two or three places at one time. So if you get held up in this one arena, it really puts a lot of stress you know, on your day. So I think it's just about making sure that all the attorneys that appear in front of you understand that you are going to control the courtroom, you are going to control the time, and that everyone's case is going to be heard, and everything is going to be addressed, but all the extraneous issues won't be dealt with. Um, and it's, it's just about control, you know, and not in a 
not in an unpleasant way. I mean, I wouldn't sit at the bench and hit a gavel or blow a whistle and say time's up, but I've seen judges that run their courtrooms like clockwork. And I just watch them and they do it very pleasantly, it, but it's just an understanding between the litigants that listen. The judge wants to deal with this issue because this is the issue that was set for today. How, what are, who are some judges, whether it's the clockwork judges or, or other judges that you've um, seen and admired and, and might draw from things you've learned from them? In terms of running a courtroom efficiently, when I was in front of Judge Orfinger, uh, when he was on the trial court in Daytona, uh, that's when I first picked up on it, because I'd only been an attorney then maybe two or three um, years, and he had to tell. And I don't know why attorneys didn't pick up on it, but when you were done, he started pulling at that collar, and you knew <laughs> that it was time to hurry up and move on. Judge Morrison in, uh, in Putnam County, she does the dependency docket. I have never, I've been in dependency dockets in front of Judge Breeze, Judge Marriott, Judge Zambrano. Because of the nature of dependency, you know, it tends to get emotional, it tends to get really, you know, dragged out and you don't really know what's the right place to say, hey, you know, I don't, she has those cases set for seven and a half minutes each. And I watch that clock and all the issues get addressed. But seven and a half minutes, we're on in that next case. A couple of times, you know, because I'm sitting there and I'm watching, a couple of times when a case will go over, I'll go, hmm, in my mind, oh, we're behind. But I'll be darned if the next case doesn't finish in five. You know, and it's some kind of way she just, and I think it's about just, again, maintaining that control over the courtroom. And I think litigants appreciate that. They like that order, you know, because they know what's going to happen. And it's, it's not going to be the wild, wild west. And, and so those are the two judges, I think, that stick out most in my mind in terms of just keeping the courtroom going because you have to have an appreciation for the value of everyone else's time. Yes. Well, we should thank you. Uh, That's it? <laughs> we will let everybody go. Um, probably not later than four. And uh, thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. You know, I told one of my friends, I said, I hope I don't turn into the Susan Lucci of these <laughs> traditional <laughs> 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 All right, thank you. Have a good day.